Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we've got some more 2A news for you. All right, this one's a pretty interesting story from the truth about guns I'd like to share. And I think you're going to like this one. It's called Houston Catches On to 3D Printed Junk Guns at Buyback Events, August 3rd, 2022, written by Jennifer Sensiba. All right, we're going to get into this article. I think you're going to like it. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Ammo Depot for supporting our videos. Uh, if you're looking for the fastest shipping, the best selection on ammo, they are definitely your go-to group of people. Uh, we use them a lot for all of our ammo that we run in our videos, especially here lately and everything. If you use the code IV8888, you can get yourself free shipping on orders over $150. I mean, ammo is expensive right now, so that's a great discount. I mean, you could order a truckload and it ships for free. So consider them if you are looking for ammo, ammunitiondepot.com. All right, so big thanks for them uh, for supporting our videos and supporting our content. Media outlets in Houston are reporting that the most recent gun buyback event was a success, <laughs> but a good chunk of the $100,000 the city spent went to people who showed up with cheap 3D printed guns, people who uh, people made to turn a profit at the event. Uh, T-Tag had a laugh at the taxpayer's expense here, so the city is changing their policy for the next event. We did get some ghost guns where people may have uh, 3D printed or made these guns specifically for the buyback program. Uh, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner told the local ABC 13 station, we will eliminate that portion. Pro-gun accounts on social media are having a lot of fun with the news. <laughs> All right. Uh, Glock to Puss interviews on Instagram had a funny take on news footage that you can find here, while others pointed out that the guy who dropped off over 60 ghost guns probably profited over $9,000 on the sale. Others say the haul was only around $3,000, but the point still stands, allowing him to buy some decent guns. The Firearms Policy Coalition simply said, laugh out loud and laugh my ass off, while their fans <laughs> had some nice reaction gifts like this one. The Harris County prosecutor doesn't understand buybacks. While I'll always mock these events for calling themselves buybacks because nobody buys guns from the cities that host them, and thus they cannot buy them back, the county's prosecutor showed that she doesn't understand even the stated purpose behind such events. District Attorney Kim Ogg sent the city of Houston a letter the day before the event telling law enforcement that the no-questions-asked policy could hurt potential criminal cases if if any of the guns were lost, stolen, or had been used in a crime. The intentions were good, but the program needs to be refined, First Assistant District Attorney David Mitchum told ABC 13. The no questions asked aspect of the program undermines the prosecution of crime. This is basically the whole purpose of a buyback event, though. If criminals are afraid to get rid of a gun because it was used in a crime, the theory is that getting the gun off the streets could help reduce gun crime by actual criminals. If the events were to stop having a no-questions-asked policy, they'd prove that the events are more about disarming civilians and virtue signaling, or possibly spreading anti-gun propaganda, that, such as guns are bad, than reducing gun crimes in cities. But the truth is that the studies show such events don't do anything for crime, so it's really just a waste of local taxpayer money. Shh! Don't tell them that, all right? We don't want them to know that, okay? And look, here's the truth about buybacks. The majority of guns that get, you know, taken to buybacks are junk, right? Grandpa's old single shot 22 that's fallen apart that, you know, okay, so Little Junior used to take Grandpa's single shot 22 out to the woods and Grandpa was like, okay, I don't want you taking my guns out anymore and, you know, took the bolt out of it and hid it and then Grandpa passed away, like that kind of stuff. Missing bolts, missing parts, missing barrels, you know, junk guns, parts guns that, the, the parts are not even worth more than what the buyback fee is. So the only logical reason that you would take a gun to a buyback is because the amount they're offering you to buy it back is more than what it's worth, A. All right, there's that reason. B, if a gun was used in a crime, you certainly would not take it to a buyback. So by saying no questions asked, right? Now, I do agree with, with the interpretation that it could hurt a criminal investigation by having a gun at a buyback because if it's no questions asked now does that legally absolve them of any connection with that gun once it's in law enforcement possession all right what if that gun murdered somebody right now you're going to take a murder weapon and destroy it so i can certainly see the the issue there in that if there has been some legitimate crime committed with that firearm 
um, then, then yeah, if it's needed for evidence, then there shouldn't be a no questions asked policy uh, for that sort of thing. Buybacks are really just a way for them to pander to the anti-gunners. Most buybacks occur in communities where most of the local law enforcement and the politicians are all anti-gun, and they see it as some way to say, see, we're taking guns off the street. See, we're doing something. And I think taking these 3D printed guns to these buybacks is pretty smart because A, they don't really cost a lot of money to print, and it, 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 is, it is considered a firearm. It is a functional firearm. And when you look at all of these alphabet agencies wanting to change the, the rules and the laws to make it where 3D printed guns are, are held with such a, a higher standard uh, than, you know, similar to a, a regular Title I gun that would transfer on a 4473. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So y'all want to say that a 3D printed gun is a gun. For all intents and purposes, it is a gun right? According to these people, they want to treat it like a gun. They want it to transfer like a gun. They want you to be held to the same standards any other person that sells guns are held to. Even if you make your own firearm uh, with uh, finely machined parts, like you make your own custom bolt action gun or your own custom AR from scratch or whatever you might do, right? They want you to be held to the same accountability as any other gun dealer. That If they had their way, that's what they would get. But see, you can't have your cake and eat it too, that's not how this works, okay? You cannot, all right, say, well, 3D printed guns are guns and then be mad when somebody shows up with a 3D printed gun to sell you. Like, hey, you said any gun, no questions asked, here you go. This is a gun. This can fire a projectile, right? It is a gun. It meets the definition of being what a gun does and what a gun is supposed to accomplish in terms of its uh, intended purpose. So it is a gun and you're saying no questions asked. You're going to give me 200 bucks, for this $9 piece of plastic that I printed in my basement, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I think that it's providing a very interesting set of circumstances that law enforcement is going to have to pivot and kind of figure out for themselves. Maybe that'll be the end of buybacks. Maybe this was the sting that they needed to go, all right, maybe this isn't such a great idea. All right, now, lastly, I'll just mention, there are a lot of people that go to buybacks and buy guns off people that are waiting in line. And it's legal to do that. As long as the state that you live in allows person-to-person -person transfer of guns, like some states are a little bit more, you know, hard going on that sort of thing. But like most states allow a person-to-person -person transfer as long as both people are, uh, you know, uh, citizens of the same state and everything like that. And, you know, you don't have to do a bill of sale. You're encouraged to do a bill of sale, right? You don't have to check like each other's carry permits or, or licenses. You're encouraged to. I mean, because ultimately that sale will come back to you in some way. I mean, if you bought a murder weapon, well, well then you, you're in possession of a murder weapon. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Or if the gun you bought is stolen, you're in possession of a stolen gun. So there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that either. So it's still dependent on you to be responsible and, and, and be like, okay, the person I'm buying this gun from, are they, are they a dirtbag or not? Right? If it feels weird, it's probably weird. So just keep that in mind if you're ever buying a gun from somebody locally or whatever. I mean, you're still culpable for the circumstances surrounding that gun, even though you bought a gun from somebody just clear and free off the street. You can do that, but you're also buying all the crap that comes along with it. So if you are going to approach people at a buyback, make sure, I mean, like if it's if it's little old grandma with an M1 Garand that she found in her, in her uh, attic and her husband passed away and she don't want it no more, probably safe to say you can buy that gun from her, right? You know, you, you keep your wits about you. Use your common sense when it comes to that sort of thing. So I wanted to share this because I thought it was hilarious and good on them. I mean, that's scar heavy money, baby. That's right on. Just trade some plastic for a scar heavy all day long. All right. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate the support of our videos. It means a lot to me and my family. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of our little world that we live in here. Uh, many more videos on the way. Go over to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a snazzy new t-shirt. That's one way you can support our efforts directly. And again, don't forget, if you go over to Ammunition Depot, use our code IV8888, get yourself free shipping on orders over $150. Great way to save some money. We all need to save money right now. So have yourselves a great day. Tons of videos on the way. We'll see you soon.